Now I'm running some of the boards that we cut from some trees that blew down and uh, made them into boards. And now I'm running them through my trim maker to make some tr casing trim for around doors and windows in the house that we're working on. It runs right through. First you put a board in the machine and out the other end comes a nice piece of trim. Any size board will work with this. I like to have them a little wider and then I can make two or This machine is a quite old bell saw. I bought it some time like the very late uh, 70s or maybe 1980 and I've used it a whole lot and it still works good. But the secret to the whole thing is I have a big five horse motor on it that really cranks it up and so you don't want to stand in line with this. It can take a sliver and run it right through you. Safety glasses and earplugs are an absolute must because this thing sure gets violent about throwing things around and makes a considerable amount of noise and we end up with stacks of shaving which can be used for various things around the place. It's good to put around plants or it makes a good thing. Our daughter will get these shavings and use them for her chicken pan. This wood is pine so it doesn't bother the chickens feet or anything and it keeps them up out of the mud. Some of the hardwoods, uh, the sh you need to look up and see what kind of hardwoods you can use if you use them for livestock because some of the walnuts and oaks aren't good for things like horses and other things. Now that we've got our trim made, we'll be taking it over to the coast and nailing it on. So we get here, get our tools out and ready to go, and we've got a project though that needs to be done first, and that's replace a broken window. We have decided to go down to Cape Kowanda and see what's happening with the big sinkhole up on the sand on top Cape Kowanda. And Marge will be driving. The Parks Department said they were going to put a, a permanent fence up there. They've got a temporary one there, but they were going to put a permanent one there. I just don't know when. It could be they've done it already, or they might be waiting till fall where there aren't so many people around to do the job. We get our first views of the ocean and it looks like there's a pretty heavy surf. Kind of rough seas out there today and I see no one out there fishing. But wow are the tourists around. This place is getting so crowded that you hardly can find a place to park and you have to pay any more to park here. What a bummer. We were fortunate enough to find a place to park and so now we'll walk down the beach a little ways till we can get to the Cape itself. There's a place where you can buy something to eat or drink here right up off the beach with where you can sit and watch the beach from where you're eating. Looks like it's real popular. Now we'll go down on the beach and see if we can get to the Cape Kowanda. The, the tourists are thick on the beach. You might think that this was Waikiki Beach as many tourists as there are here and it seems like it's that way most of the time. As we walk past the big hotel, 
we see that the erosion is continuing to happen out in front of the hotel and now it's not as much the wave action as it is the sands drying out and the winds eroding it away so we'll wait and see what happens there the surf is pretty high with haystack rock standing tall out in the background it's kind of a chilly day and the wind is hooping it up so there's not very many people that are brave enough to wear their swimsuits but we did see a few little bikinis out on the sand but no one's out in that cold rough ocean much except a few kids are wading out about knee deep in it a coast guard helicopter is circling over and then turns and goes back I don't know what they're doing there I didn't see anyone in trouble or anything but it certainly could happen here looks like the sandy slopes of Cape Coander are, are more in style today than any place else there's steady rows of tourists climbing up there and a lot of people go up and slide down the sands of Cape Kowanda. Since we're here and Marge and I both need the exercise, we're going to climb up on the Cape and take a look and see if we can see anything that might be happening about the sinkhole. We climb right up the sandy sand dunes on sort of a trail that's cut into the edge of the sand dunes. And then we get up on top and wow what a view we look back down over the beach where all the tourists are and we can see some of them out in the surf a little bit and others standing on the beach we get up and look in what they call the bowl area and that's the area that was responsible for most of the loss of lives the sandstone down below can get real slick and then a wave bigger than others can come in and catch you and swoop you in and there's really nothing to hang on to and once you go in all this area is undercut and you get under that sandstone and that's usually the end although there have been a case or two where people did survive it but that's kind of rare usually they don't. After looking at the cape we see that nothing's been done for the fence, new fence around the sinkhole and we get back home and our sun comes and it's time to put the new window in. There's a broken window that needs to be replaced. Get it from outside, maybe. I'm going. Ready? I guess maybe I hit a rock with the lawnmower and it slung it through the big pitcher window. And it was just a very small rock, but that's all it took to break this window pane out. Now we're going to replace it. Boom. Way off the First I cut Way off the double sided side. tape that glues the window in with a Stanley knife and then we gave it a little shove and it went out perfectly and landed right on the tarp that we'd put down to catch all the crumbs from the glass. Boy it really broke when it hit that sidewalk. Okay, ready? There's the new window. This glass is quite heavy, so it takes both Duane and I to carry it out. And it's got sort of a little insulation type frame around it to keep it from getting broke. 
and it's in good shape. Thank We check and double check to see that we have the window in the right direction. Then we put the double face tape on and get it ready to shove the window up there in the place where it belongs. We double check the window to make certain that there's not a top or bottom or inside or outside and we see none of that so we put the new weather stripping stick them on and get it ready to stick in. We've put all new low E windows in this house, uh, double pane with the, a lot of space between the two panes. And so now we're going to replace this window and get it back in shape again. And I hope I don't hit another rock that'll go through it with the lawnmower. It was just a little fragment of rock that hit the window, but it hit it with a lot of force, and it sure did break it. And then we, we need to center this thing, too. We get all the double-sided tape put on, and then this window is pretty heavy. It's a pretty good-sized window. And then, with the efforts of all of us, we push it up and put it into place and somebody will stay outside and hold the window in and I'll go pull the little coating off the double sided tape so the window will stick to it and it fit just perfectly. We're pretty happy with the fit the window did and it looks good and now when I get that coating off the double-sided tape then it'll be stuck in place and then there's a little plastic glass retain retainer that pops in to the front of it and we'll just reuse the old stuff. After we get the retainer in and the window in place then I'll go inside and start putting some of the trim casing around the front door and the windows since we made it we got to try it out and see how it's going to be we have an air nailer that we'll nail it on with which it makes it a whole lot easier than it used to be when you nailed everyone by hand but it can be done by hand very easily too and the trim seems to fit perfectly as I tack it on with the air nailer. All the corners are cut on a 45 degree angle and I have a little block plane I use to plane it down to where to where it'll the corners will all fit perfectly. I think that's very very important to get a good corner on your tree. I've been doing this all my adult life and watched my, di my dad do it when I was just a child. Only difference is everything used to be done by hand. We even sawed the trim by hand. But now we have power equipment, power nailers, and everything to make life easy. With all the power equipment and everything, it's still easy to mess up, so you still have to be super careful. And I always glue the corners so they don't move in time, and it makes a lot better fit on them. I always glue both pieces to stick them together really good. And then I'll shove the piece up, and nail it in place and I always put one right through both pieces of trim on the corner just to hold it in place that would be the first thing I'll do is stick a nail right through the upper corner 
of the trim. And that's really easy. All you have to do is hold the gun up there and pull the trigger. And it'll, it'll go in there really good. And this should hold the trim to keep it from separating on the joints on the corner in time. Hopefully it will. So I line it up and pow, I push the little trigger and the nails in instantly. After this, I'll go right down the edge of the trim and nail it at certain places all the way down and make certain it's straight. I put one in the top and the side both just to hold it really good. Then I'll start nailing the sides of it down. It's real easy to get carried away with that nail gun. It's so easy to put these nails in, but you have to restrain yourself from doing too many nails or it'll make it look And that ugly. should be about what your joint would look like. And then the other side. Then your door should look about like this.